Welcome to Year 7 History. My name is Gabrielle and this is Lesson 1 in our unit on the Old Stone Age, Investigating History. Lesson Overview. In this lesson, you will learn about significant events from 200,000 BCE to 10,000 BCE, how Old Stone Age people lived, where early humans came from and where they migrated to. Lesson Objectives Use timelines to conceptualise the significant events of the Old Stone Age. Investigate sources to understand how early humans lived. Explain the origins of early man. Explain where early man came from and where they migrated to. Investigate how early man lived and survived. And compare the life of an early man to modern life today. Let's begin our lesson with a starter activity. Here are some pictures of long extinct animals that early man would have hunted. Can you name them? So I'd like you to pause the video now and after I've explained the activity and write down numbers one to five in your notebook and see if you can name the long extinct animal that you can see in each of these five drawings. So pause the video now while you complete this activity and when you're ready to check the answers, restart the video. Welcome back. Here are the answers to our starter activity. So as you can see, all of these long extinct animals have been named. So we've got picture one shows the woolly mammoth. Picture two, the saber-toothed tiger. Picture three, the dire wolf. Picture four, the giant kangaroo, also called Procoptodon. And picture five, a woolly rhino. How did you go? Did you get them all correct? So let's get into the main part of our lesson today. We're going to begin by looking at a timeline to give you some idea of what happened and when. So when uh, paleontologists and scientists and historians look at um, early, the history of early man, they usually start here in what's called the Paleo Paleolithic Age or the Old Stone Age is what we're looking at today. And the Paleolithic Age began around 200,000 BCE and lasted for about 70,000 odd years to 130,000 BCE. And this is when the earliest true humans called Homo sapiens appear in Africa. And here is a, a wax model of what an early Homo sapiens man would look like. Now, from around 75,000 BCE, these Homo sapiens began to spread through Asia. And around 60,000 BCE, they migrated to New Guinea and Australia. So as you can see, Australia, Papua New Guinea and Tasmania used to be connected to each other. And the land was very close to modern day Indonesia, which explains how early man in Indigenous Australians managed to cross from Indonesia to Australia across the Torres Strait. But we're going to look at that in more detail in one of our next lessons. So as you can see from the map, this shows the spread of humans from around 40,000 BCE up into Northern Europe. So they sort of, uh, they progress from Africa and travel up through the Middle East and the Mediterranean, up into Europe, across to uh, Siberia, Northern Russia, up there and down to India and Southeast Asia. So by about 36,000 BCE, humans reach Southern Australia. So it took them a very, very long time to travel from the top of Australia and migrate all the way down to the southern parts. Around 33,000 BCE, humans moved into Tasmania, and this is when sea levels were low and Tasmania was still connected to the mainland. 
around 30,000 BCE, the other type of human-like um, uh, person that lived at the same time as Homo sapiens was Homo neanderthalensis, or often called Neanderthal man. And Neanderthal man actually died out around 30,000 BCE. So the only human species left on Earth at that time was Homo sapiens. And it was around the same time that early cave paintings were created in France and Spain, which you can see in the middle picture. And around the same time, rock engravings were made on Cape York Peninsula, which is in far north Queensland by Indigenous Australians. Now, going back a little bit, 35,500 BCE, the world's earliest ground edge grooved axes are made in Arnhem Land in Northern Territory in Australia. And here are some samples that are in a museum. And between 30,000 and 10,000 BCE, humans began to colonize the Americas. So they managed to travel from Europe across, probably via Greenland and Iceland, to North America and then down to South America. And around 20,000 BC, the last ice age reaches its peak. And so the earth starts to warm up from there. So around 12,000 BC, the Middle Stone Age begins in Europe. So the Paleolithic Age becomes what's called the Neolithic Age. And around 8,000 BCE, the world's earliest returning boomerangs are used in South Australia. So this unit is about the Old Stone Age, uh, and then the next unit is going to be about the New Stone Age or the Neolithic Age. So here are some review questions about the timeline. So what I'd like you to do is to pause the video and write down um, numbers one to five in your notebook. So let's take a look at the questions first, and then you can go ahead and complete the activity in your notebook. Question one, approximately when did the Paleolithic age begin? Two, true or false, the Neanderthals did not die out. Three, when did humans migrate to New Guinea and Australia? Four, when were early cave paintings created in France? Five, how old is the world's oldest ground edge axe? So what you'll need to do now is write down numbers one to five in your notebook, write down the answers. But to do that, you'll probably need to rewind this video back to the beginning of the timeline so you can find the answers to the questions. Once you're ready to go, pause the video and we'll continue on with the answers. Welcome back. Here are the answers to our review questions. How did you go? Number one. Approximately when did the Paleolithic Age begin? This was 200,000 BCE. Two, true or false, the Neanderthals did not die out. This is false. The Neanderthals did die out, and this happened around 30,000 BCE. Three, when did humans migrate to New Guinea and Australia? The answer is around 60,000 BCE. Four, when were early cave paintings created in France? And the answer is around 30,000 BCE. And five, how old is the world's oldest ground edge axe? Approximately 37,500 years old. And it was made around 35,500 BCE. Okay, let's continue on with our lesson now on the Old Stone Age. So most evidence of Paleolithic or Old Stone Age people comes from bones and preserved artefacts such as tools. Old Stone Age people were hunter-gatherers, so did not have permanent settlements. They moved around from place to place with the seasons and the movements of prey, that is, the animals they hunted and ate. Their clothing of animal skins and wooden tools did not normally survive, so we have very few artefacts that show how they lived. Beginnings in Africa. Scientific evidence tells us that several different human-like species emerged in Africa about 2,200,000 years ago. Over time, they developed into our species today called Homo sapiens sapiens. Now, Homo sapiens, we just refer to it as Homo sapiens, but 
Technically, the scientific name is Homo sapiens sapiens because the Neanderthals, their technical name was Homo sapiens neanderthalensis, and we just called them Neanderthals. But they are both part of the Homo sapiens species, but with slight differences, hence the names Neanderthalensis and sapiens. So Homo sapiens are modern humans, the humans that are on Earth today. Okay, so we're going to watch this video now about the emergence of human species from Africa. Now, there is a review question, so let's have a look at the question first. What are the two most important physical evolutionary traits that allowed the Homo species to evolve into modern humans? So if you like, you can pause this video now and write down that question in your notebook so you can have a think about it as you're watching the video. So if you'd like to do that, pause the video now and then I will get back onto the video. All right, so if you're ready to watch the video, you can begin watching now. If you need to take notes, you're welcome to do so. Millions of years before industry, agriculture and civilization, the world stage was set for one creature's unprecedented rise. The story of humanity's evolution began about seven million years ago, when the human lineage broke away from that of chimpanzees. Over time, an ensemble cast of over 20 early human species, or hominins, came to the fore. Most became extinct, while others might have been ancestors to today's humans. Each species exhibited varying degrees of human-like physical and behavioral traits, such as large brains, small teeth, bipedality, and tool use. These hominins fell into three major groups. Early hominins, Australopithecines, and Homo genus. Humanity's earliest relatives lived between 7 and 4.4 million years ago in Africa. Having most recently shared a common ancestor with chimpanzees, they had many ape-like traits, such as a small cranial capacity. However, fossils show that some ancient hominins were also beginning to show human-like characteristics, such as small canines that were likely used more for eating and not for hunting or fighting. The next phase of hominin evolution involved primates called Australopithecines. They lived between 4.4 and 1.4 million years ago across the African continent. Like their ancient brethren, Australopithecines had some ape-like traits. However, changes in the skull, spine, and legs indicate a notable shift toward a very human-like trait consistent bipedal locomotion. The third and current phase of human evolution involves members of the genus Homo. The earliest Homo species likely date to more than two million years ago, making them a contemporary of some Australopithecines. But unlike earlier hominins, who exhibited a mosaic of ape and human-like traits, Homo species were becoming distinctly more human. Their cranial capacity was growing larger than any other hominins. They developed sophisticated stone tool technology, and they became the first to control fire. These physical and behavioral adaptations, along with advancements in technology, allowed some Homo species to be the first to migrate out of Africa and explore the rest of the world. While a cast of over 20 hominin species have walked this Earth, only one remains. Homo sapiens, shaped by millions of years of evolution, embarked on a journey of exploration and industry its ancestors could have only dreamed. Okay, so let's take a look at the review question again. What are the two most important physical evolutionary traits that allowed the Homo species to evolve into modern humans? So let's check the answers now. 
The answer is bipedality, that means walking on two legs, and increased brain size. Let's continue on with our lesson now. Beginnings in Africa. Most of the time period during which modern humans have existed is called the Old Stone Age, the age of the hunter-gatherers, the time before many people became farmers. This age ended in the Middle East around 11,000 years ago. Elsewhere, it ended later. Homo sapiens, our species, were the ultimate survivors of this evolution of humans. They gradually migrated throughout Africa and into Asia, Australia and Europe from about 60,000 years ago. Paleontologists and archaeologists have traced these migrations by studying and dating fossil sites and archaeological sites and comparing the tools and bones of humans and the animals they hunted. So why did they migrate? Experts are not 100% sure, but many theories suggest that food shortages or animal migrations were the main reasons for human migration. Climate pressures are also suggested as a reason for migration, such as changing weather causing problems with pollination or animals competing with humans for plant sources. So we can see here an illustration of ancient humans hunting woolly mammoth. Technology and art. The earliest tools were stones that were smashed to create a jagged edge. Over many thousands of years, humans improved stone tools by flaking and grinding them. From about 60,000 BCE, people were using stone chisels, scrapers and small spear and arrow tips, as well as sewing needles and fish hooks made of bone. They were also wearing body ornaments and using symbols in cave paintings. So in this image here, we can see a prehistoric cleaver flint and a prehistoric fish hook line and sinker. Prehistoric art tells us something about how old Stone Age people saw their world. There is evidence of grinding pigments to make paints in Africa at least 100,000 years old. There are prehistoric art sites on every continent Prehistoric people in Europe carved small sculptures and made cave paintings from around 40,000 years ago. Most importantly, archaeologists believe that people who communicated through art must also have communicated through spoken language. So we can see here an illustration of a prehistoric cave painting and a Stone Age carving, most likely a fertility goddess or figure, perhaps to represent Mother Earth. So let's take a look at this video now, which talks about prehistoric cave art. There are some review questions after the video, which we'll take a look at. Let's watch. Woolly mammoths, steppe bison, and other large mammals once roamed alongside people across Eurasia. Tens of thousands of years later, we may have a glimpse into this Ice Age world through the cave art left behind by early humans. Around 400 art-filled caves and shelters, predominantly located in France and Spain, have been discovered so far. Some of the most elaborate prehistoric artwork exists in caves in France, known as Lascaux Grotto and Chauvet Pont d'Arc. Cave art dates as far back as 65,000 years ago to the time of the Neanderthals. Though, radiocarbon dating and other methods have revealed most art to be less than 40,000 years old and created by Homo sapiens. The majority of cave art depicts animals that humans would have encountered or hunted during the Ice Age, such as mammoths, horses, lions, aurochs, and deer. Some human figures and other symbols have also been discovered. Cave paintings were mostly created with red or black pigments made from rocks. Some artworks were painted directly onto cave walls, while some were first engraved into the stone with tools. 
Occasionally, the artists would follow the natural contours of the stone walls to accentuate an animal's features. Ever since the late 1800s, people have debated the meaning and purpose of cave art. Some scholars think cave paintings were created by shamans who would go deep into caves and enter a trance-like state, drawing animals they encountered in the spirit world. Symbols repeated across artworks may indicate that those symbols had agreed upon meanings among the artists. Thus, perhaps cave art also represents the earliest form of graphic communication. In reality, cave art may have been created for a variety of reasons. While we may never know with absolute certainty why cave art was made or the meaning behind individual paintings, these works give us insight into the evolving minds of our prehistoric ancestors and the world in which they lived. By one view, cave artists were prehistoric naturalists. Their detailed drawings may teach us about the appearance and behavior of animals that have long been extinct. But perhaps more significant, a part of our never-ending quest to find out who we are and where we came from, cave art may provide evidence of a time when humans were first able to etch their thoughts in stone. Okay, let's take a look at the review questions now. One, where are most cave paintings located in Europe? Two, how old are they? Three, give one reason why humans may have created cave paintings. Four, what was the paint made from? And five, what did ancient people depict in their paintings? So take a moment to pause the video now and complete these questions in your notebook. You may wish to rewind this video to watch the video about cave paintings one more time to help you answer the questions. When you're ready to check the answers, restart the video. Welcome back. Here are the answers to our review questions. One, where are most cave paintings located in Europe? They're located in France and Spain. Two, how old are they? Around 40,000 years old. Three, give one reason why humans may have created cave paintings. To express what they knew about their world for religious purposes or to communicate to other tribes. Four, what was the paint made from? Crushed rock mixed with water. And five, what did ancient people depict in their paintings? Animals, plants, symbols, and people. Let's talk about the Neanderthals now. What happened to the Neanderthals? Paleontologists around the world continue to be baffled about why the Neanderthals died out. The Neanderthals were the forerunners to Homo sapiens, modern humans. Neanderthals and some types of Homo erectus were living at the same time as Homo sapiens, but by about 30,000 years ago, Homo sapiens were the only ones left. Did Homo sapiens cause this or were there other reasons for the extinction of the Neanderthals? Neanderthals and Homo sapiens had similar sized brains and used similar tools. Both were hunter-gatherers and both used fire. There is evidence that both cared for sick or injured group members and buried their dead. Fossils suggest that Neanderthals were shorter but more strongly built than Homo sapiens. Neanderthals had shorter lives, lived in smaller groups, and never spread past Europe and Western Asia, and did not change their tool-making technology as much as Homo sapiens. Evidence suggests that Neanderthals were also less nomadic so occupied their sites year-round. This meant they would have to hunt and forage over a wider area each day rather than follow animal herds from place to place. A changing Paleolithic world. The time that we call the Pleistocene epoch, about 1.8 million to 10,000 BCE, was generally a time of extreme cooling and recurring ice ages. These periods lasted for tens of thousands of years. The accompanying climate changes were due to small changes in the Earth's orbit around the Sun. The last ice age began around 110,000 BCE and reached its peak about 20,000 BCE. Humans survived by adapting and becoming more intelligent. The Northern Hemisphere's long, cold winters 
meant fewer plant foods, so humans adapted their hunting weapons to kill larger prey such as mammoths, ensuring enough meat to feed large groups of people for months in the freezing conditions. The world began warming up from about 18,000 BCE. By 13,000 BCE, the ice sheets had started melting. Between 12,000 and 8,000 BCE, the climate fluctuated wildly. But then the Ice Age was over. It was followed by the Holocene Epoch. This new epoch brought a milder climate to the Northern Hemisphere, but some parts of the Southern Hemisphere became very hot and dry. This global warming created conditions in which humans in a few places would move towards the New Stone Age, the age of farming, towns, and what we call civilization. Well, that brings us to the end of our lesson. There are some extra activities to be found on our lesson page online. So complete any of these worksheets under the extra resources section of this lesson online. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out our website, voyagerschool.com.au, for more valuable courses in more subjects for high school students. See you next time.